Uh, welcome, Wolf of Wolfettes. So we are back with the brilliant Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart on the PlayStation 5. And we are playing through this game on Renegade Legend difficulty. And I hope you guys and girls are having an absolutely fantastic day. Now, in the last video, we finally managed to get into the archives and get the plans to build a brand new Dimensionator. So what we need to do now is both Ratchet and his new little ally over here, Kit, need to go to a heavily guarded outpost and find some sort of forge. Now, before we do that, there's two other things we're going to be doing. Now, first things first, we are going to have a look around on this planet and we are going to collect the rest of the Lombax Lorbs so that we can unlock the rest of the armour pieces. And I also want to show you guys and girls where you can get the spy bot on this planet. And then once that is done, we are going to switch over to both Rivet and Clank and we are going to head to another new planet and try and find some quartz that we're going to need to build the brand new Dimensionator. So let's get straight into things. Now, if you want to know where three of the Lorbs are, just watch my previous video because I think I showed where three of them are in that video. It was either the previous video or the video before that I showed where three of the Lorbs are. And once you've unlocked three Lorbs, then uh, the rest of the Lorbs get marked up on your map. So let's start having a look around. Now, if you're also looking for the Craggy Bear, I think I found that in the previous video. Uh, if you come to this location right here, there's a little sofa, and that's where you find the Craggy Bear, which is a little teddy bear that is required for you to get the uh, Platinum Trophy. But yeah, let's uh, get straight into things then. So we might as well get this one first, as it's right near the ramp. I'll also grab up the uh, two golden bolts that we can get, and I'll also get the uh, spy bot, and I'll also get all of the lords in this video. But um, one of the golden bolts on this planet, you won't be able to get until later on in this playthrough. So if you're currently on this planet, and you've collected all of the armor pieces, and you've collected all the other stuff, and you've only got one more golden bolt left, then you have to come back later on in the story, which uh, which will be quite a bit later. It involves that big like bit of machinery over there that you can see in the distance. But once uh, something happens in the story, you'll be able to get to a door and there'll be a golden bolt hidden behind it. But you won't be able to get it at this point of the game. Right, looks like we need to do another one of these button puzzles. I'm surprised that thing walking around can't actually uh, step on you and kill you. <laughs> did we do it? Yeah, we did it. I wasn't sure if I pressed that button because I thought I jumped over it and didn't actually step on it. Lovely. Oh, we, all, we found four in the previous video. I thought we only found um, three. Oh, well. Okay, and we're going to get this one over here. Also, whilst you're travelling around, if you see any random vehicles that start driving away from you extremely quickly, make sure you chase them because uh, they normally contain either an armour piece or a golden bolt. And I think they also might have one of your... Um, one of your uh, lobs to collect as well. So if you see a random vehicle that just goes shooting past you, make sure you chase it and use your grappling hook to get on the back of it because it's going to have some important item on it. Either a lob or a golden bolt or a piece of armour. Look at them two over there having a little bit of a punch up then. Do you see that? <laughs> just practising with each other. I think we can put two of these down now, can't we? Yeah, we can because we've got a few upgrades in the previous videos. I should definitely speak to Mrs. Zircon at some point because I am very, very low on ammo. Oh, looks like I can't get that horb until I get rid of the hostiles. Oh god. I was gonna say we already got rid of the hostiles, but apparently not. <laughs> I really like this um, electric gun. I don't know, it's it's very weak, but once you've upgraded it a lot, it becomes very good, but I just love it. I know it's something about it. I've always been a fan of weapons that involve like electricity and stuff like that. It's like in World of Warcraft. I know I talk about World of Warcraft a lot, but um, basically I only ever played as a hunter named British Wolf and uh, a resto druid named Beowulf on Emerald Dream. But uh, I purely made a shaman. I can't remember the name of my shaman. 
purely because I wanted to be an elemental shaman so that I could use stuff like a lightning bolt and stuff like that. Lightning bolt was amazing. Just there it spread around all of the enemies. I think they've changed it nowadays. I don't know how it works nowadays because the game always changes every expansion where all of the classes get a rework. But I made a shaman purely because I just wanted to use electric, electric powers. No, no, something about electric powers are just fun. I think there's something I liked about um, Infamous as well. Uh, Infamous 2. Because I think you had a lot of electric powers in that one, didn't you? Wasn't it? Was it electric powers? It was, wasn't it? Or was it Infamous Second Son? Or was it all of them? I can't remember. <laughs> I can't remember. I, I don't really remember Infamous very much. Like Second Son. I remember um, Infamous 2 quite a lot and the uh, mini game Festival of Blood. But I've really forgotten about um, Second Son. And I played it on YouTube as well. And Infamous First Light. Man, I played those years ago. That was 2014. They weren't very good playthroughs. I had a lot of problems with those games. <laughs> like in technical aspects, I had a lot of problems with my setup. Ah, right, here we go. Yeah, you want to chase these guys. They are very, very quick. But you need to grapple onto the back of them. I don't know why it's telling me to do that when I just clearly did it. But you need to grapple the back of them and then press the button. There you go. There's one that you're going to see, probably that contains a piece of armour, and it's an absolute nightmare. <laughs> absolute nightmare to get. It won't stop running, it won't stop driving really quick. Oh, nice work, brother Lombax. I'm grabbing the chest armour now, so just bring those lorbs over and it'll be yours. Oh, I know. Might as well go and speak to him now. But yeah, uh, all of the stuff you need to find, you need to get six armour pieces. Uh, three of those are going to be received from um, from uh, the guy who you give the lorbs to. Two of them will be received from Pocket Dimensions, and one of them will be received from inside one of those vehicles that I just showed you, that I just captured. And two of the golden bolts you can get now, one of them you get later. And the spy bot, I think, is somewhere around here. It's on like this um, abandoned boat. It looks like something you'd find in Quest for Booty. But uh, we're going to do all of that in this video. Like I said, I'm going to do everything in this playthrough, basically. Get all the collectibles, just do everything that's available. Because it's not the biggest game in the world. I reckon if you focus on a story, it's about 14, 15 hours on a higher difficulty. And if you do all the other extra stuff, it's probably about 18 hours. So we're going to do all of the other stuff just to make the playthrough last longer. Because I'm enjoying playing this on YouTube. Which is something that I've not really... Uh, done for a while. I've not really enjoyed many games lately. Except Metopia, because that's just funny on YouTube. <laughs> right, we might as well buy this finally. I've already watched the preview of this. It's basically like an underground rocket launcher, like a homing in rocket launcher. Might as well fill up my uh, weapons as well. Lovely. Brother Lombax does it again. Woo! Here's a sick looking chest piece to go with those sweet, sweet legs. The only thing missing now is a righteous helmet. If you collect the rest of the lorbs, it's yours. Sweet. All right, well, we are going to collect the rest of the lorbs, mate. Don't you worry. All right, let's go up here and grab this one. I think this one might be inside a cave. <laughs> I think it might be inside a cave that's filled with those little, like those little like, they look like little baby velociraptors. But it's filled with a, it's in a cave filled with those, if I remember correctly. Ah, uh, also, to get a golden bolt, you want to follow these pads on the floor right here. Yeah, we're just going to quickly do this. You want to quickly follow these. You're going to hit the buttons, you're going to use these little speed boost pads, and then you're going to go through a little pocket rift, and it's going to take you to the gold bolt, if I remember correctly. I don't know how like quick you've got to do this bit, but yeah, try and be as quick as possible. There you go. <laughs> Lovely. And the other gold bolt that we need to get is going to be on the back of one of those vehicles. And the final one that we're going to get, like I said, you have to come back here later on in the story when you have to return to this planet again to do something. Not going to spoil it, obviously. Right, uh, we might as well go and get these ones now as I've been sent all the way back here. <laughs> Yeah. 
Oh, that was close. But we need to go over to the uh, the bit where we had to uh, race to defeat that defense system when we were trying to rescue all of the monks. We need to go over there, and I think there's going to be a few uh, a few little rifts that you can use to get to uh, another one of the uh, Lombax Lorbs. Oh, this bit, this bit right here flipping confused me for a while. I thought I had to like find something on the floor and like slot it into one of these slots. But all you need to do is just shoot the red one. The one that's red, just shoot it. And every time a new red one appears, just shoot it. That's all you need to do. But I decided that it was way more complicated than it actually was. <laughs> yeah, so just shoot these. There was a lot of things like this in Assassin's Creed Valhalla that confused the absolute shit out of me. You had to eat these like mushrooms in Assassin's Creed Valhalla and you started like tripping out. And you had to do like random puzzles and stuff. <laughs> Violence is always the answer. But I'm telling you right now, if my kids were being bullied at school, I would tell them that violence is the answer. Because everything I did involving bullying when I was at school, whether it was ignoring, whether it was... Um, speaking to the teachers about it, whether it was informing my parents about it, whether it was trying to just tell the people doing it to stop. I tried absolutely everything and it wasn't until I smacked one of the bullies in the face because I just one day I just snapped because I'm not, I'm not a violent person. I'm more of a lover than a fighter, but you know, everyone's got their limit. And when I finally snapped, I wasn't bullied anymore. But unfortunately, it was only three days before I left the school. So any benefit I got from whacking that kid, um, it was worthless because I was going to a new school in three days any day, anyway because I was moving up to secondary school. So yeah, I, mean, I would say that violence is sometimes the answer. Not always, but I, would, I say violence is the answer sometimes. As a last resort, of course. Unless somebody is like actually attacking you, then beat the shit out of them, mate. Defend yourself. Don't wait for the police to arrive or you're going to end up dead. <laughs> By the time the police arrive, you'll be, good, you'll be dead, mate. The police are too slow. They're too underfunded in England, that's for sure. Right, so the um, the long the Lombax Lorb is up there, but I think there's supposed to be like a. Ah, oh, here we go. I was gonna say there should be some like pocket dimension somewhere. Well, not a pocket dimension, like a rift. Ah, oh, here we go. Lovely. Wasn't there something like this in Horizon Zero Dawn? I remember something in Horizon Zero Dawn where you had something that you needed to collect. And uh, when you collected all of them, you went into this like little secret underground lab. And your reward was that set of armour that made you basically immune to damage. I think that armour set that makes you immune to damage. I think uh, if you do like New Game Plus in Horizon Zero Dawn. Because they added like a harder mode and New Game Plus. I'm pretty sure that armour set that makes you um, immune to damage, stops working or something. I think they did something that was very cheeky. <laughs> right, I might as well quickly grab this golden bolt. Now, I cannot wait for Horizon Forbidden West. I really, really hope that comes out this year. Preferably, probably in November, because then in October, we can do Far Cry 6 playthrough. In November, we can do Horizon Forbidden West playthrough. And then in... Um, uh, in December we can do Dying Light 2. So yeah, I think that'll work out pretty nicely. And plus, there are so many flipping games that are oh, crap. Oh, come on! What'd you do that for, Ratchet? <laughs> but there are so many massive games that are coming out in 2022, providing none of them are, like, delayed. You've got Hogwarts Legacy that's supposed to come out next year, which that's going to be a big, light like, game, and I cannot wait for that game. Probably my most anticipated game of anything. You've got uh, Forsaken that's supposed to come out next year, which is another RPG. You've got um, Final Fantasy 16, which is going to be another uh, massive game. Uh, if Starfield doesn't get delayed, then you've got a gaming PC or um, an Xbox, because obviously it's not going to be on PlayStation there, or Nintendo. But um, that comes out at the end of uh, 2022, but I reckon that is the most likely candidate for a delay. But mind you, Bethesda love releasing broken games, so they probably would just release it broken anyway. So <laughs> you probably will get it next year, no matter what. Uh, what else you got next year? Man, there's a ton of games coming out next year, massive ones. It's going to be insane. You've got like Gotham Knights, that like Batman uh, co op -y sort of game where Batman ain't actually in it, I don't think. But you've got that game. You've got uh, 
you got oh, you got um, Justice League, Kill the Justice League, Suicide Squad, Kill the Justice League, or whatever it's called. Terrible title for a game. Man, there's so many games coming out. You've got God of War Ragnarok, or whatever they bloody desire to name it. Man, next year's going to be insane for video games, I'll tell you, boys and girls. So for that reason, I hope they bring out Horizon Forbidden West this year. Because otherwise, there's just going to be too many games next year. Gran Turismo 7. Man. <laughs> Obviously, I won't play Gran Turismo 7. I've never been a fan of uh, Gran Turismo. Just because it's a very, very, very serious racing game. I prefer, like, the arcade Need for Speed type racers. It's way too... Uh, complicated. I, I can't get on with it. The driving is too real and I'm not a good driver in real life so makes sense that I wouldn't be good at a realistic driving game. <laughs> I mean I can drive okay I just can't stop the car and that's a very big problem both in real life and in video games. Sweet. Oh my god! Ah! Shit, mate, look at me shooting their farty balls at me. One game that I uh, saw, because I, I always, even though I don't play anything involving Microsoft, because 90% 90, 90 of the time their games just don't interest me, but I watch their conference anyway, because I just like, I like everything involving games. I like the hype around games and stuff like that. And also, normally you've got a lot of third party games or timed exclusives at Microsoft's events that are, will also be on PlayStation or Nintendo. So I always watch it for that reason. And one game that was there, it's, uh, it's an Xbox. Well, it, there's no such thing as an Xbox exclusive. People keep talking about Xbox exclusives, but they're on PC, so they're not exclusive. But um, there's one game that was uh, there. It's already out. I can't remember what it was called, but it had a lot of like, it was like, um, it was like a co op or a multiplayer game. And uh, there was a lot of like giant bugs and stuff in it. I can't remember what it was called. I think it was made by Obsidian, the people that made Outer Worlds and lots of great games like that, Fallout, New Vegas. But it's made by them. But that looked pretty damn cool. That looked like a kind of game that I would enjoy. I can't remember what it was called. It's already out. I think it was maybe called Grounded, maybe. Oh no. But yeah, that looked pretty damn good. Look at the amount of bad guys I've got defending this Raritanium. Because that's the only reason these guys are here, because of the Raritanium. I was going to say, flipping hell, my electric gun already uh, upgraded itself, but uh, it was me, uh, oh god, my Tapiriary Sprinkler, or whatever it's called. Oh crap. Let's get a double Mr. Zerk on out here. Not Mr. Zerk on, I'm thinking of the wrong game. <laughs> Let's get a double uh, Mr. Fungi out here. Man, I love having four of them just helping me shoot. It's amazing. It just evens the odds so much. Because you're always outnumbered in this bloody game. <laughs> so it's just nice to have a big bunch of like mushrooms helping you out in the battle. Now, we slaughtered those guys. And there's a lot of raritanium over here. We've got some over here. And there's also some behind me. Oh, it's called Ms. Fun Guy. I've only just realised. I never really pay attention to the uh, subtitles unless it's one of the main characters talking. <laughs> so we've got Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Fun Guy. Alright, we've got one more Lombax Lorb to find. Yeah, and I think this is the one where uh, you have to go into a cave filled with those little, like, raptory looking things. There is a, um, what are they called, like, dis discographies? Is that what they're called? Clinical discographies, aren't they? Those like things where it shows you all the different types of enemies. Oh, look, there we go. Perfect. That's the final uh, armor piece that we need to get before uh, we hand in the final law. Or the second to last. I get really annoyed with these bloody uh, tutorials that pop up sometimes. I don't mind it telling me what to do once, but this is like the 20th time. I get it. Jesus. Especially when I'm literally doing the thing it tells me to do. <laughs> oh, I'm going to have to leave that behind now. Come back in a second, uh, Raritanium. We'll be back in a minute. There we go. Well, look at that. Yeah. 
sweet. Oh, this... Hang on a minute. This might be... Just in case it is, this is where I'm currently standing. So memorize where I'm standing. Because this might be the place that leads to the spy bot. Possibly. Yeah, I think it is. If there's a giant boat in here, this is where the spy bot is. And obviously, as I've said before, you want to collect the spy bots because it unlocks the rhino. Even if you're not too bothered about... Um, even if you're not too bothered about platinum in the game or anything like that, you want to get the Rhino anyway because it is just a phenomenal weapon to have. The best weapon in the game. And it's even more fun to have in this game and you'll find out why when we unlock it. I'm not going to spoil it for anybody watching that hasn't unlocked it themselves. I don't want to ruin your fun. <laughs> but yeah, definitely worth unlocking. Here we go. Oh shit, oh it's these guys. Those weird things that attacked me when I was doing the uh, Battleplex. We are going to do the Battleplex. They frequent this sector. Thanks for the warning. You are welcome. I think he was being sarcastic because you warned him after they appeared. <laughs> but um, yeah, we are going to do the Battleplex um, on YouTube. But I'm going to do it uh, once I've finished the main story. We'll go back and... Uh, do the Battleplex. Or maybe I'll do it on my main account and use like all of my fully upgraded weapons and stuff like that. Just to show off all the weapons. Similar to what I did in Ratchet and Clank Nexus. Because I got a lot of views on that video. People enjoyed that. I think I got a lot of views. I think I had like a thousand views when I looked a few years ago. So, I mean, that's pretty good for my channel when I normally get like 20 views. <laughs> Fucking 20 views. Work my ass off every day for 20 views. Ridiculous, ain't it? That's what you call dedication, Wolf and Warfest. That's one thing people can't say. They can't say Beowulf ain't dedicated and he don't work his ass off. Some big boys are coming. Typical. Uh. I don't know if you guys heard that. It's such a nice noise. <laughs> Look at all these bolts on the floor just waiting to be sucked up. I kind of wish I had the uh, Poltergust from uh, Luigi's Mansion and we just suck them all up. Man, I really, really, really hope uh, sooner rather than later that Nintendo announces a Luigi's Mansion 4. Nintendo had a, a somewhat okay Nintendo Direct. I mean, a lot of people are gonna absolutely love it. Brother Lombax! Brother Lombax, you found them all! Oh man, come on back to see me. You're gonna flip at this helmet. I'm not going to flip at this helmet because I'm not even going to wear it, buddy, because it will ruin the whole look of Ratchet. Because you've got to see their face. They're adorable. But yeah, a lot of people are going to consider uh, Nintendo's E3 presentation as sublime, purely because they finally showed Breath of the Wild 2 again, which, I mean, I, I'm, I've only ever played one Zelda game and I loved it. So, I mean, at the moment, I've loved every Zelda game I've played, but I've never played the first one. For me, the problem with Breath of the Wild, the only thing I could think of is, even though this is not something that I normally complain about because I'm not a graphics whore, I just wish Nintendo would release hardware that was capable of making games look how they should look nowadays. Their, their, tech, their bloody hardware is just ancient. It's fucking ancient and it's annoying as hell. Could you imagine if like, Nintendo had PS5 and Series X kind of hardware, which they should have. They should be on par with us. Because the uh, Switch is technically their next-gen console. That is competing with PS5 and uh, Xbox Series X. Because it released way sooner because the Wii U was a flop. So, uh, yeah, that's the hardware that's competing with PS5 and uh, Series X. Could you imagine if they released a uh, Nintendo console with the same power as PS5 and that? What, what Breath of the Wild would look like? It'd be ridiculous, and that's why I think it disappoints me the most. 
Even though the game was ridiculously fun, I've not played it, but I've seen enough videos. And there's a lot of like cool little Easter eggs and hidden things to find. That's what I love. I love a game where you always find something new. And it's, it's so filled with secrets that even like 10 years later, people find new shit. I like that. And that's something the Breath of the Wild is definitely good at. But it's just, oh man, it looks horrible. It looks, I mean, for a Nintendo game, it's gorgeous. But when you look at like modern games, it's just, oh. <laughs> But uh, yeah, in regards to Nintendo's E3, there was there was some good ones there. Just it wasn't like the kind of show that would interest me because like there weren't Pokemon there, obviously, which there rarely ever is. Um, they didn't show Luigi's Mansion 4 or anything like that. No Pikmin 4. No like new 3D platformers and stuff like that. No Kirby. So for me, it wasn't the best, but it, it was still good. Still some good games there. E3 in general was just naff this year. I blame the virus. Everything's just been delayed. Hopefully Sony do an event soon because Sony's got some absolute big things they can show. I don't even... You just helped save Lombax history for generations. My brothers and I, thank you. It was an honor, brother. Lovely. Wasteland gear. This uh, looks a little bit like something you'd find in, uh, oh, what's it, what's it called? The, uh, Mad Max. Let's have a look what it looks like, actually, because I think I'm still wearing the pre-order armor, ain't I? Yeah, I'm wearing the pre-order armor, and it doesn't provide any kind of, uh, those collections, uh, collection bonuses, are they active all the time? despite what you're wearing. Are these like permanent bonuses that I get for collecting the uh, armor pieces or do I have to actually collect, uh, wear the correct armor set to get the, the buff? Because there it's displayed there, you would think that these collection bonuses are always active even if you're not wearing all the armor sets. Anyway, let's have a look. Let's have a look what we've got. Ah, oh, it's a little bit thin, ain't it? Oh, what are these? Oh, I don't know. Let me... What does it actually do? Damage from pirates reduced by 10%. Mm, that's pretty naff. What does this one do then? Damage from indigenous, in, indigenous creatures decreased by 20%. That's, I suppose it's okay. Like monsters would do less damage to you. So far, this is probably the best one that I've got rivet wearing. Melee damage increased by 10%. Mm. I'm going to put on... I'm going to put on this one, I guess. It's better than nothing. Right, let me uh, edit the colours. Got to have it as green. My favourite colour, as many of you know. That's not bloody green, that's turquoise. Yeah, that looks that looks pretty good, doesn't it? It looks like a handsome devil, doesn't it? Okay, right, we ain't got much time left, so what we're going to do now is we are going to quickly jump into the ship and we are going to head to... Um, oh, I can't remember the name of the planet. It's like Bravir or something like that. And we need to find some quartz that we're going to use when we craft the Dimensionator. I don't know why I keep saying quartz like that. <laughs> I keep saying it very like, I don't know, snobby, very posh. I don't know. I think there's a knock on the door then. I think. Either somebody put something through the letterbox very aggressively, or there was a knock at the door. But my dog didn't bark, so I'm a bit confused. <laughs> Oh, actually, oh, damn, it might be my delivery. I ordered a tuna for, from U2s. It takes a while to get here because I'm pretty sure it comes from America, maybe. Oh, damn. Well, uh, it's raining at the moment, so if they've left it on the doorstep, it's currently getting ruined. <laughs> oh, well, I've got to end the video in a second anyway. A bit weird that my dog didn't bark. That's very strange. You know what, I'm going to end the video now and we're going to travel to the new planet in the next video because we've only got like a minute left. There's no point going there now. We might as well uh, 
start the planet fresh in the next video. But yeah, we're going to go to the planet and we're going to find some quartz for the new Dimensionator that we're going to build. And I think there's also a chef you can meet on the planet that's got like a random mission for you. And I think she might give you a spy bot as a mission. This next planet really does show you the power of the SSD. Like this next planet, if you were, if you were like wondering like what benefits the SSD can provide to games, um, this next planet will definitely show that to you. It's, it's a bit of a nightmare to traverse, but it's, it's a very beautiful planet. But anyway, I'm, uh, I'm rambling. But yeah, thanks for watching Wolf Warbets. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Like, share, and join the pack today.